Hi everyone, welcome to the next part of the tutorial reversing with HyperDBG. In the previous part, we see the basic principles about the script engine and we see how it works and wrote some simple scripts. In this part, we're going to combine our knowledge from the script engine with EPT hooks and see how we can use EPT hooks in our debugging. So here is a brief outline about what we're gonna talk in this part. Uh, actually, we're gonna talk about use cases and examples of classic hidden hooks, detours style hidden hooks, and different memory monitor or emulating a hardware debug registers. Also, we're gonna see how we can manage different events in HyperDVG like event list or disabling, enabling, clearing or managing events and uh, we will talk about flashing buffers. At last we have a hands-on uh, which in which we combine our script engine knowledge with the EPT debugging techniques. So let's talk about classic hidden hooks. Classic hidden hooks or uh, you might know it as uh, hidden breakpoints are uh, just like regular breakpoints but uh, implemented with some unique features actually it's different than a regular breakpoint but uh, it uses the same concept by using these hooks you're able uh, to hook uh, the hook codes anywhere in the memory uh, from the kernel mode to user mode the thing is that even you can manage to put a hook on the middle of a function or uh, it's up to you wherever you want you can put a uh, put a hook hyper uh, in this case is optimized to handle these events which are uh, hook events uh, substantially faster than uh, than simple kernel interrupt handlers. I, I will tell you why I mean uh, I, I want to talk about the kernel interrupt handlers later. The unique thing about HyperDVG or these hidden hooks is that uh, it won't notify the user mode code or uh, the even the OS kernel that the breakpoint is triggered or as it uh, handled in the hypervisor level so the OS or the application uh, doesn't have any idea whether it's currently a breakpoint is triggered and something is currently debugging the code. The hidden breakpoints are not visible. User mode or the kernel mode code wants to create for example a hash algorithm from uh, the memory then it won't be notified that uh, the memory is modified even though the modified the memory is modified but uh, it's hidden in the EPT level uh, so there's nothing the hash is the same as before as uh, as it's like uh, nothing is changed and if uh, the application uses a move instruction to read that uh, address of the memory it seems that nothing is changed there just like normal routines and the uh, HyperDVG exports or brings these EPT hooks as events and as you can as you probably know whenever anything is like formed in an event style or in an event style event in the HyperDVG then uh, you can write custom scripts or create logs or you can halt the system run custom codes or whatever uh, you want that is true for all the events. Uh, so let's see some of the use cases when uh, we want to use the EPT hook. So uh, you might uh, think how an EPT hook might help us. Well, the first thing is that it's not visible. For example, if you are debugging a malware that it that it extensively monitor its memory, then to check whether uh, is something is changed or not, or if there is a breakpoint or not, then by using HyperDVG, the malware won't uh, won't be notified that it that its memory is changed. Another thing is that uh, if we we're gonna create logs uh, from the parameters of a function, or we can whether uh, we want to see whether a special part of the function is ever called or not, we can use EPT hooks as it's so fast faster than WinDVG in these cases. Another thing is that we can easily, by using a simple script, we can change the program's no normal execution flow. We can uh, just write a simple script and completely change the program in a new direction. 
or another thing is that we can ignore the execution of a function we can simply just bypass everything and the function is never executed we can just ignore it and return uh, the, and the application won't be notified that the target function is ignored so here uh, are some uh, cases when we can when uh, we can use the apt hooks you can apply apt hooks by using uh, uh, this command apt hook which is an extension command as you can as you probably know uh, apt hooks are those hooks that are implemented in the apt or extended page table uh, of intel processor which is a EPT is the hypervisor mechanism used for handling page tables in the hypervisor level. So we use them to bring these features to HyperDVG Debugger. Uh, let's see some of the examples. In the first example, uh, we just uh, uh, put a simple EPT hook on uh, EX allocate pool with tag function uh, that, is, that is responsible for allocating pool memories on the kernel of the Windows. This works simply like a breakpoint, but uh, the thing is that it's hidden. Uh, nothing can understand that there is a hook on the target memory address. We can also put a direct address or a static address uh, to the EPT hook. Uh, another thing is that uh, we, we can have a, an script that is running uh, whenever the EPT hook is executed for example in this case i want to show the parameters uh, as you can as you probably know uh, in uh, x64 fi uh, functions in windows everything is passed in a uh, fast call uh, with a fast call calling convention so you can expect that whenever you run this command then the parameters are uh, passed in the r6 rdx r8 and r9 and here we, we put a simple printf to print these parameters. Another thing is that we can easily manipulate the function's execution flow. Uh, for example, in this case, we set the zero flag and uh, change the direction of a jump, uh, which is the jump is located in this address. We have an example on the hands-on section later in this uh, part. We also uh, uh, we are also able to completely ignore the execution of a function. For example, if we want to set an EPT hook here in this address, we can just put uh, RAX to one, which means return true, and then change the RA register to to the address that that, are, that is currently pushed uh, in the stack. Like uh, if you want to re return something else, because uh, everything that needs to be returned by a function by default or passed to the RAX register, so you can change the uh, RAX register to your desired uh, return value and then use this command to simply change the RIP address or the instruction pointer address and ignore the execution of a special function. So let's see some demos. Uh, I will use the exact same uh, script here. Let me copy. It. First of all, I, I create a WinDVG debugger to bypass the driver signature enforcement. So I'm gonna start the, my VM again. Meanwhile, I wanna open the HyperDVG from its source code. I built HyperDVG, so I go to bin place open the HyperDVG CLI here. So I'm gonna put it here and uh, I'm gonna put uh, VM here. Yeah. VM is not working. Yeah, it's not working. As you can see, I run and I want to listen to the HyperDVG pipe. Meanwhile, connect the debuggy part. So yeah, it's currently uh, synchronizing the symbols here. And now the, the thing is that the debuggy is currently running. So I pause it by pressing the control C. Everything is paused here. 
and I'm gonna uh, execute the exact same script. Uh, I don't know why this uh, happens here. Uh, this puts a simple EPT hook breakpoint on NTX allocate pool with tag and run and create a lock from its parameters. Okay, the code is executed. So here we go. Here are the parameters. If I just want to uh, show you guys, I just press Control C again. These are the parameters to this function, and you can see that these parameters are passed. This is a special function. Sure, you can use if else a statement to check whether a special thing happens, or also you can uh, put a instruct uh, put an EPT hook to the last instruction or the return instructions of this function to see what are the addresses that are allocated by the x allocate pool with this is a uh, you can have innovative methods to create your debugging or to debug your debugging 